Dear students, in this module we continue to study the properties of an amino acid that give rise to the folding process and give properties to the overall 3D protein structure. The amino acids have their own structures besides their chemical, physical and hydrophobic tendencies. So these structures are unique and are extremely useful in giving rise to the interaction between the amino acids and amino acids and water. Now, it is very important to note that the structure of an amino acid can make it hydrophobic, hydrophilic, active, inert and so on and so forth. So therefore, we need to understand what is the organization of these structures within a bigger protein so that we understand the philosophy of how the proteins are constructed. So towards understanding this, it is important to note that the amino acids which are hydrophobic, they go towards the inside of the protein. While those that can interact with water, this line the surface of the protein. So this is useful because uh, an active amino acid which is there on the surface of the protein can interact with the external world. While if you place a hydrophobic protein on the surface of the protein, then it will not be able to interact with the external world. Moreover, the chemically inactive molecules, they have to be located in the core as well. Because you do not want to have a surface that is chemically inactive. So the packing of hydrophobic residues goes like this. The buried hydrophobic side chains are a key driving force in the protein folding process. You must remember this philosophy while you're looking at amino acid side chains while you're looking at polypeptides because once you try to make a 3D protein out of the amino acids or the polypeptides then you have to pack the amino acids which are hydrophobic towards the inside of the protein. But while you're doing that you will encounter a problem. The problem goes like this. The amine group is positively charged and the carboxyl group is negatively charged. The side chain may be hydrophobic and may be inert, but these two amine and carboxyl group are good enough to have a chemical interaction. So these two groups have to be neutralized and then you can have a totally stable internal core of the protein. The solution to this problem is quite trivial that we form secondary structures of the protein sequences. So what happens is that the active sites within these amino acids, they make hydrogen bonds with each other and therefore satisfy the bonding need at both sides and therefore they become chemically inert. And the chemical inertness leads to the increase in stability of the uh, protein core. 